Joined by Hofstra head baseball coach John Russo following a uh, doubleheader sweep uh, losses to Northeastern today by scores of 3-2 and 13-5. Coach, Taylor, two games. Uh, you want to open up with your comments on just on the day in general? You know, um, there was a question asked to me yesterday that said, you know, earlier in the week, did you have, um, when you're planning out this weekend, you know, is this how you planned it to go? And that has been a big no since Thursday. You know, we didn't have a great plan for not having, you know, Jack Jack going on Friday. We didn't have a great plan for, you know, losing Tino Rosso in the middle of the night last night with a family emergency. But we did have one plan in place. We had Jimmy Joyce that we were pretty positive was going to give us a great effort you know, on the mound. And then we, we come out in the first and I, I feel like we're sleeping a little, even though Jimmy's ready to go. He gets uh, the strikeout, ball hits the pad. We don't throw the runner out at first. We don't even look to throw the runner out first. No big deal. We're down one, nothing. We answer back. We get one, give the top of the six the guy gets a double um, wild pitch guy on third, no outs. Jimmy gets a strikeout on one hole, strikeout on two hole, and he has the best hitter in the CAA down one, two. You know, and the umpire decides to call a balk on his 14th pitch with a guy on third. 14th pitch. You know, I, I've never seen like anything like that in 21 years of coaching college baseball. Then he gives up a home run on the next pitch because he's a little demoralized from the, you know, given run that they were given. We come back, we score one, we get a play where there's at second base. You know, guy calls him safe, 10 feet in front of him. They ask him to appeal. Two guys from over 100 feet away call the guy out. Instead of having bases loaded and Gauthier up, we have a first and third and got, or two outs and, you know, Gauthier. But I think it switches the game. You know, we, we've had to handle so much adversity, you know, in these last – you know, 72 hours. It's been a lot to overcome. No big deal. We came out in the second game, you know, and I thought Brad, oh, I thought Brad was good. He gets out of a bases loaded jam. And then D'Onofrio gets hit by a backed up breaking ball, you know, on a one, two count on the hand. And the guy calls strike three instead of a hit by pitch. Then we steal a bag. And instead of the guy being safe at second and the throw going in there, we get a double play. And you know, I just felt like we could get nothing going. And, you know, I talked to the team about this before. One of my things I love is 18 to 22 year old kids can live on emotion and college athletics is awesome. It beats professional sports because these kids aren't pros. They live and die by this game. And, you know, I just felt like they never recovered, you know, after the first inning of game two, we come out, we hit a guy 0-2 in the first or in the second, give up a homer, and then the rest of the day we threw away and can't be more disappointed in our efforts in game two. But, um, you know, to Jimmy and, and Bosch to strike out 15 and walk zero is a game we have to walk away with a win in, and we didn't. All right, open it up for questions. Tommy? Hello, Coach. Could you just <clears throat> speak a little bit to the um, <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Coach, could you just speak a little bit about the job that Jimmy Joyce did in the first game? Obviously, 13 strikeouts came away with a loss. Um, but what have you liked from him from him so far this year? You know, he's the ultimate teammate. Uh, he's the most prepared kids on the team. He lives in uh, breeds. Hofstra baseball. He has uh, gotten himself into shape uh, mentally and physically to for this season. And, you know, he has literally delivered every weekend uh, we've played this year and, you know, come out against the best team in the CAA, I believe. And, you know, strike out 13 and walk none, you know, shows you how good he is overall. And, um, you know, Coach Glavin after the game was uh, really complimentary and thought he was the best guy he's seen all year. And, you know, Jimmy's tough. And then, you know, even more than Jimmy is after we lost the first game for nine innings strong, he gave energy again, even though he had sold out in the first game and, you know, couldn't have been a better leader in the second game, just not anybody following his, um, his lead. Uh, James. 
Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you guys were a little shorthanded today due to some extenuating circumstances. Uh, regardless of that, was there anything you were able to nail down in game two with the pitching staff as something you can address moving forward? Well, you know, we haven't gotten a lead yet. And so, you know, when you're working from behind, you're not sure if you're going to score. Listen, you got to give Northeastern's pitching staff a lot of credit. I mean, I don't know if um, professional teams are seeing what we've seen the last uh, three games. I mean, uh, the kid yesterday sat 92, 94, top in 95 with three pitches in play. Murphy was sitting 90, 92 with a slider. You know, he struck out seven in a row at one point. Keen, you know, was an 11th rounder tearing down, you know, a lot of money to come to college. And he was sitting 90, 93 with a really good slider. So, you know, we really never got a lead. So you don't know how to play the game and, uh, and get up. We got close there 4-2. And I thought Rue came in and, and did a nice job. But you know, listen, tomorrow we, ha we have a lot of pitching left. I mean, the thing that the freshmen did yesterday for us is, you know, they saved a lot of our bullpen arms. We, we just hadn't gotten a lead yet. And, um, you know, so tomorrow we'll have Fiolo, uh, Fiolo um, Mott, Sujak, Monday, Mikulasic. You know, I mean, we have a lot to, to hold them down tomorrow again. And, you know, it'll just be a matter if the offense decides to show up or if the team overall decides to show up. Uh, Blake? Coach, you mentioned Keen. He seems to work really fast on the mound. How much do you think that uh, kind of tripped up your offense? You know, he was really quick twitch. And um, I've never seen somebody like that explosive, like you said, to the plate. And, um, you know, early on, I didn't think he had great stuff. Uh, you know, we I thought he hit the first guy. And then second guy, he walks. And, you know, we had him there 3-2. And, you know, you got to give him credit. He really settled in. And Listen, let's not miss this. Northeastern outcoached us, outplayed us, outpitched us, outhit us in the second game today. And um, they're a really good club. Um, you know, I, I'm just upset, frustrated. You know, I, I think we're a good club also. I think we should have won game one. Uh, you know, really hurts missing, uh, obviously, Jet and Tino. I, they're, they're a big part of what we do. We get Sika back tomorrow. You know, I think Sika brings a lot you know, to our batting order, you know, uh, we're not getting much out of the DH spot right now. I think at one point we were seven of eight strikeouts in the DH spot. So, you know, I don't think Alex will be in there tomorrow, but, you know, next week against Delaware, it'll be nice to get him back, uh, you know, going and, you know, we just need to get hold, but more importantly, I think we need to get a win tomorrow. Uh, Tommy. Coach, just wanted to ask you, what did you see from the lineup that you liked more? Obviously scored five runs in that second game. What positives can you take from the offense today? I, you know, Coach Westinger talked about this at the end. You know, we did a little bit late when there wasn't pressure on, but when it was early, we, we didn't get much going. You know, the thing that I'm not seeing right now from the group against good pitching, listen, I think we're a really good hitting club. But against good pitching, you have to have nine guys on the same page having the same approach. And, you know, I think you guys saw it a lot, a lot of check swings, a lot of um, taking back-to-back -back breaking balls, then being surprised by a fastball down. Like, you know, I thought we had a lot of bad approaches, you know, as a whole today. You know, uh, you got to give Will Kennedy really a uh, tip of the cap. You know, I think he's had a great day. He's a great teammate, super worked hard. And really happy for how Will's done it, but, you know, we haven't had a continuity of an approach. And um, I think you see that a lot in the big leagues, like with the Yankees and stuff. Sometimes, you know, they get a lot of strikeouts and, and guys aren't functionally right, but that's what we feel like. We're, we're functionally off right now this weekend. All right, I'm going to take one last question, James. Uh, one thing I noticed between games, you switched uh, D'Onofrio and Gauthier. Was there a specific reason you did that or just trying them out in a, a different spot? Or was there an actual strategy um, that you were looking to go with against a different pitcher? You know, I think Anthony works in the three hole when he's driving in runs. And, you know, last year he was our leading RBI guy or one of our leading RBI guys. And, you know, he hasn't done that at all right now. And, um, you know, nobody more frustrated than Anthony, but you know, we need RBIs. And, uh, you know, I talked to Austin and I was like, hey, listen, I know that uh, I'm removing a strength, 
you know, of him getting on base and being on, but we need to drive in runs. And, and, you know, I think obviously Goulart does it at a big rate and Rob is pretty good, but, you know, uh, Anthony hasn't been doing it at a high rate. And so that's more of a leadoff guy. And then, you know, I thought maybe take a little bit of the pressure off of him, um, you know, let him just worry about hitting and getting on base. He swung the bat a little bit uh, better and, and even picked up a, you know, an RBI in that game and stuff. But listen, we need Anthony D'Onofrio to get going. And, um, you know, we have one more game tomorrow and five more weekends after this. And I still think he could get odd. He hasn't gotten odd all year. And if he could get going, then, you know, we could be really tough. All right. Coach, thanks for your time. Guys, thank you so much.